last time, we saw how carefully fabrics were chosen and tested to make sure they do their job properly. Like here, protecting soldiers in the Arctic. Well, this time, we're going to look more closely into the actual design of textile fabrics. Follow me. Because right now, we're going to have a look at how a fabric is actually made. Right, let's take this one for a start. There you go. It's woven, I think. But to make sure, I think we're going to need one of these, a magnifying glass. Yeah, there you can see, it's made up of yarns that are interlaced with each other at right angles. Now, if you look closely there, you can see one over, one under, and so on. There you go. This piece of fabric here is actually known as a plain weave. But what about this one over here? Just have a look at this under the magnifying glass. This time, it's two over, one under, two over, and one under. Can you actually see how it makes a pattern? Well, that one there is called a twill weave. That's what you'd use for sort of making trousers and things. Aha, uh -huh. but this time, yes, it's different. Have a look under here. The yarns are smooth and shiny. And you can actually see there how some leap over each other three or four times. That in the rag trade is actually known as a float. It's that there that makes the fabric look shiny. It's called a satin weave. But to look at yarns themselves, we can't use one of these. We need something much bigger, like this over here. We need a microscope. Now, let me just unravel one of these. Because yarns are made up of numbers of fibres actually twisted together. There are many different fibres some natural, and some are actually man-made. Hey, there you go. Let me put that under there. There you go. Now, just have a look at this. This is cotton. Looks like twisted ribbons. Cotton fibres are, of course, natural. Another natural fibre, wool fibre. As I say, it's also natural, but it's sort of scaly. It's a bit like snakeskin, really, isn't it? Acrylic, a man-made fibre, is a kind of double-twinned fibre. And just look at this, polyester, smooth filaments, another man-made fibre. And my favourite now, silk. Smooth filaments spun by the silkworms to make its cocoon. Mm. Amazing close-up, aren't they? Well, a bit later on in the programme, we'll be looking at an exciting new fibre that's just been developed. But before that, have a look at this. Here's a web of fibre rolled together, but not yet yarn, because it simply just wah, pulls apart. But if I twist it, just like this, look at that doesn't pull apart. Twisting or spinning fibres makes yarn. And yarn, knitted or woven, makes fabric. Yes, here's where design comes in. By choosing different fibres to make different yarns, by using different weaves or different knits, and by using different colours and different patterns, we can design thousands of different fabrics. And for each one, we have a different use in mind. So, right now, let's see some design in action at a woollen mill in Wales. Freshly dyed and dried wool is measured into the carding machines. Carding is a process that can't be hurried. Slowly and gradually, the wool fibres are teased out and encouraged to lie parallel to each other as they travel from one set of carders to the next. The aim of the process is to roll the fibres into long, continuous slivers ready for spinning. Here they are being spun very quickly and wound onto spindles. The operator keeps a wary eye open for broken yarns. When he sees one, he ties the two ends together 
and starts up the spindle again. Right now, we're going to see some real weavers in action. Penny's brought her loom along. So, look, the thing is, I've heard so much about things like warps and wefts, but I've got no idea what they're about. What are they? Well, the warps are these threads here which run lengthways along the material. Oh, I see, yeah. And the wefts go across the material. These ones here? Yeah. So how do they all work together with the loom, the warps and wefts? Well, very basically, as I say, you've got your warps running lengthways. You mm. decide which thread you want to pick up, and you pick it up using the shaft here. Oh, I've got it. And you pass your weft thread through it, like that. Oh, clever stuff. And beat it down. Because obviously the material's got to be kept quite tight, really. Yes. It's quite a long process, really, isn't it? Well, it grows quite quickly. Mm. So how do you go about changing, sort of, like, the colour, for example? Well, you've got shuttles here. You just put different colour thread on it. Ah, clever stuff. Penny, thank you very much. Right, well, we move on to something just a little bit bigger than this. This one over here, and it's operated by Kate. What's the difference, then, Kate, between this one and the one we've just seen? Well, this loom's got eight shafts on it instead of four. So what are the advantages of having so many shafts here, then? Well, the more shafts you've got, the more complicated the patterns can be when you're actually weaving. Hmm. The one thing I have noticed is there's these sort of, well, like guitar strings in the front, really. What, what are they? Well, they hold the warp threads so that every time you pick up a shaft, they actually pull up the warp thread so you can thread the weft through. Ah, I see. So you can sort of change your pattern as you go. That's right. Clever stuff. Is the shuttle exactly the same? No, this one's slightly different. This has uh, rollers on the underside. And what's the advantage here. of those? Well, that means that you can push it through the weaving really quickly. Oh, go on, let's see you in action. Right. You can, in fact, move quite quickly, can't you? Yeah. So what would you use a machine like this for, then? Well, these, these looms are really for making small samples of cloth on. Mm. You don't waste much, then, do you? No. <laughs> no not Kate? At all. Thank you very much. Thanks. Put power to a loom and it will do the job more quickly. Can you count the shafts in this power loom? The weaver's just putting a new spindle of red woolen yarn into the shuttle. All set, and off goes the loom again. Now watch the pattern forming as each weft yarn is beaten into the fabric. On this loom, quite an intricate pattern of checks is being built up. Old shuttle looms like these go faster than hand looms. But they're really slow compared with modern looms, which shoot the weft yarn across the loom on a jet of water. You know, it's always good news when a completely new family of fibres is discovered. There are so many more exciting possibilities. Well, a few weeks ago, I went to Harrogate in North Yorkshire, where Imperial Chemical Industries are. ICI for short, and right up there, that's where they do their work on fibres. Well, we're here today to look at an exciting new fibre called Tactile, and with us to show us around and explain a little bit more about it, Dr Sam Hay, hello. Good morning. Keith. Right, well, we'll talk about nylon first of all. Nylon was very popular in the 50s and 60s, but nowadays in certain areas, it's lost its popularity, hasn't it? We make nylon, and it's proper name polyamide fibre for use in anything from car tires through to parachutes, from ladies' lingerie through to anoraks, and so on and so on. In the car tire side, it most certainly hasn't lost its popularity. Right. It's a, a very strong fibre, a very good performing fibre, and in those areas, it's absolutely crucial. 
So what's actually wrong with nylon? I mean, well, if we if we go to the the apparel side, the fashion side, uh, I've a nice simple example here, which shows nylon as people know it. Here is an absolutely excellent nylon fabric. It's both windproof and showerproof, won't tear, but it's very shiny, it's very flat, and it's not very attractive. Hmm? Whereas if you pick up, say, on your own clothes, this sort of natural look, natural touch, this is the sort of thing that people are looking for. So what is nylon? This garment, part of it began its life in the North Sea. Gosh. Hmm? And we then take the crude oil in, uh, we split it up and refine it into several base chemicals, and we combine these together to form a particular product called a polymer. This is polyamide polymer. So this is, in fact, nylon, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. I can't actually believe that this stuff ends up as a jacket. <laughs> but in fact, the process is very similar to the, the, the natural process one sees in nature. Right. Like this, the idea of a spider spinning. Hmm? Because what we do is we take the polymer and we put it in a big, what we call a melter, just a big pot that's mm. heated up, and it melts the polymer, and the polymer flows down through holes. Do you see? I've got it here. Right? Through the other side, and then is drawn and pulled away from that and wind up on this big cheese. And this is, this is nylon. So there is basic nylon. It feels very smooth, doesn't it? So what is tactile? We've created a new technology from which you can draw new yarns. In the old one, we couldn't draw any new yarns. It was, it's like a bionic pull, if you like. Yes. We've got a new bionic pull full of new life, new ideas, and almost every day we dip into it, I can come out with a new fiber, a new concept, a new idea. And so we've created a family of yarns for the anorak side. And this, in fact, here is, is one such yarn. If you remember the nylon one here, which I have just beside yes. me, remember that basic nylon one? It, it, it's very flat. Hmm? It's very, very straight. Yes, yeah, very easy, smooth, isn't it? That's right. Okay. Now, just run your fingers along this. Now, that is a lot different, isn't it's, it? It's totally Very rough, different. isn't it? It's totally different. Yes. It, I mean, it actually feels like cotton when you try and thread it through a needle. That's right. Well, we've put in extra processes. I can show you that if you just pop up to the microscope. You can see that very, very clearly. Just let me bring it up on the screen. There we are. Look, oh, do you yes. see? Absolutely straight filaments here. And, of course, that smoothness translates into the garment. If you remember the garment we saw is smooth and shiny and a very mm. simple surface. Mm. Let me bring up now the tactile yarn, just to see the difference. Gosh. How about that? That's a lot different, isn't you it? See, do you see all yeah. the, the loops now that the yarn has? Mm. And the convolutions within the filament bundle itself. You see here? Yes. I mean, so, it looks like chaos, doesn't it? Well, it is. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's a sort of organized chaos, a, na a naturalness. Mm. This is an anorak fabric, which is created is in... Yes, indeed. I can't actually believe that this is a man-made fibre. It's a tactile fibre, it's a fibre in its own right, and it brings that mixture of naturalness and nylon toughness to the fabric together. So you have a beautiful fashion fabric combined with something that still won't rip, still won't abrade, or whatever. Right, well, that's the material. What about the garments? OK, OK. Knowing you, we thought we'd get a nice garment along that you might just try on. This is in our tactile, and it's from a particular family of tactile yarns known as the cotton loop yarns, right? That so this does look like cotton, doesn't it? And it's got, actually, yes, it's a, I'm very impressed. It's got a it, good feel to it. It looks like cotton, it yeah. feels like cotton. Keith Chegwin, I'm going to put this on your <laughs> shoulders. You see what you think of it. All right. Wait. Well, it's taken four years to develop. And a couple of seconds to put on. Do I look the part? You certainly look the part. You certainly look the part. It's my summer look now. <laughs> And here's the same jacket. Feels really comfortable, actually. Well, still in Harrogate, but in a different part of the building, I went to look for a guy called Dennis Hurst, who's a weaver and who supervises power looms. Now, I personally know that tactile can be woven on a water jet loom, but how can a little jet of water from a pistol like this weave fabric? Well, let's go and have a look. 